Well, we're back on Stribble Springs. Oh, we are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. And we're we're anyway. Last week we finished installing Steve's water tank. Isn't that cool? Isn't that the neatest water tank in the history of water tanks? A uh, few little things left to do on the water tank, but for the most part, the water tank is done, and we're ready to move on to railings and interior and lighting in Al's Freight Depot. And we're also going to present ourselves with a major award. Exactly. Because <laughs> we're not going to enter this in any model contest, so we'll give ourselves a major That's award. That's right. <laughs> so let's start by looking at how we've uh, constructed all of these lights. And then we'll get on to building the railings because we don't want our people here to fall off into the pond. <laughs> no, we don't, especially that banker. <laughs> Al's Freight Depot is a little plain right now. It needs some dressing out. So let's start adding some parts to it. Now this is, of course, what uh, Al's Freight Depot is based on. Uh, the Freight Depot from the Rogue River Valley Railroad. Oh, that's neat. In Jacksonville, Oregon. This is a different picture. Uh, it's just one of the trains at the passenger depot. But notice that over here on the passenger depot, there's a lantern. Yes. That is a Dietz Pioneer street light, and it's supposed to be mounted on a pole, and notice it's still mounted on a piece of a pole. <laughs> oh my. But somebody sawed it off and then hung it up underneath the eaves of the train station. But the, we want to do one of these uh, Dietz Pioneers. As you can see, it's huge. It is. That's the Dietz Pioneer on the left, and there's the picture of the Rogue River Valley Dietz Pioneer on the right. So that's what kind of uh, lantern that is. And it's sitting next to a Dietz Hot Blast Lantern, mm. which is no small lantern either. No. But compared to uh, a Dietz Pioneer, it's tiny. Right. So we're going to build at least one of these Dietz Pioneers. I was kind of thinking of building three of them. But anyway, let's start with building one. <laughs> and it's it's going to be built mostly out of these KNS brass shapes. We use, we use this for a lot of we, things. Yeah, they come in handy. Yeah. Well, and they telescope inside each other. They're brass tubes and then wires. And the brass tubes will telescope inside of each other. And then you can solder this whole thing together because it's brass. It forms easy. It's really fun and easy to work with. And then we're going to be using... These, we bought these these rivets for doing Levi's. Oh, how riveting. <laughs> well, we've never actually used these for gene splicing. No, we haven't. <laughs> yeah, no. We bought these just because they're really interesting shapes and they come in handy for all kinds of different things. And in this case, we're going to steal one of these to use for the Dietz Pioneer. Ah. For the chimney part. Hey, that works. Uh, above the, the glass chimney, the metal part of the chimney. And I'm going to shove one of these uh, little copper rivets down inside a piece of tube and solder that in place. And that will form the, the vent on the top. Now, we found these glass chimneys in a dollhouse store. Yes, aren't they cute? They're adorable. They're they just are. too tall. Oh. So you said you could cut one down. Um, perhaps. I'll try to find Because they're glass. They're glass. They're yeah. real glass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, you work on cutting one of these things down. Now, I also found these little bitty chimneys oh my and they're way too small for anything we're doing here but we will keep those uh, as reference for a future project a shot glass a shot glass is a, <laughs> they're just really they're that tiny <laughs> they're way too small for even a deep hot blast anyway here's my first attempt at creating the top of the Dietz pioneer I used a brass washer for the the lens shade mm -hmm. and uh, it's close but uh, it's it's not quite right. One of the problems is it's not wide enough for the gas return arms to get out and around the chimney. Oh. Um, and the metal's just flat too thick. So I thought, I'll take it and put it on my anvil and put on my, my blacksmith costume. Yes. And uh, just flatten this guy out a bit. There you go. <laughs> but first, that's going to require annealing it, because if I just smack it like this, it'll just split and break, because it's too hard. So what about eardrums? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I heated it up with our torch until it was cherry red, quenched it in water, and then smacked it on the anvil, and there you go. Well, there it is. It's all nice and flat and bigger. And now, when I slide it over the tube and solder it in place, it's big enough around and it's thin enough. Right. And that's the look right there. That actually looks like a Dietz Pioneer. So, score! 
Now the air return tubes go right up through that, which means I need to drill it out. Yes. With these, you'll notice we buy these in, in large groups because we break them a lot. Oh, no kidding. They're very brittle. Uh, they work a lot better on the drill press, but uh, generally we just use them in the in the Dremel and hope for the best. And that's right. that's what I did in this case. I just took one of these and Dremeled two holes out in the lens shade. Yes. And then passed some k &S brass wire through there, bent that to the appropriate shape, and there's the top of the lantern. Well, that looks cool. Yeah, it's starting to look like a Dietz Pioneer. It does. <laughs> So it's time to move on to the font, the mm. bottom part of the lantern. And uh, the Dietz Pioneer font is really good sized because it has to be able to burn all night. It's a street lantern after all. And then the gas return uh, tubes actually return to the very bottom of the font. Oh, really? Which is unique for a Dietz uh, lantern of any kind. But that's a very unique feature on the Pioneer. Anyway, I took three uh, telescoping tubes big enough to hold the grain of rice bulb up through the middle of it, soldered those together, and then turned that on my toy lathe. That, that <laughs> It's not really a toy lathe, but it is. I it's mean, a toy. It's, I mean, I bought yeah. it for $45 on eBay. It's hey, made it in works. China. It works great. I'm, I'm not a machinist, and I don't have a real lathe, but this, this toy lathe works great for this kind of thing. So using that little toy lathe, I reshaped the, the three telescoping tubes, to get them to the exact right shape for the font and then the uh, the gas return tubes will actually bend in and attach at the bottom there except from this point i have to use glue yes because the glass is there and mm -hmm. i hate to think what would happen if i took the torch oh, to blingo. it yeah so i've used super glue here and i've bent the gas return tubes to the bottom of the font where they belong on a pioneer and then uh, those will have to be blended in and then uh, shoved the light up through there and took it out to lay out to test it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That is just neat. Now notice that it has a huge hole in the top of it. It does. So I'm going to putty that in using my favorite epoxy product, uh, Green Stuff. Green Stuff? I buy this from a website called Green Stuff World. You used to be able to just get this at the, at the hardware stores. And then it got replaced by that thing that looks like a Tootsie Roll. Uh, oh my gosh. And you can buy that. You can buy the. It's the same thing. It's the blue and yellow epoxy, uh, but it's in kind of a tube, better known as Billy Mays's Mighty Putty. That's what I was going to say. Is that Billy Mays? <laughs> but even when Billy Mays was hawking this on TV, you could still just run over to Ace Hardware and buy it yes. for less than Billy Mays was selling. Mm. But this ribbon version is much, much, much better. Anyway, you just snip off a little piece of that, uh, take the yellow and blue pen, blend that together, just keep mashing it and mashing it and mashing it until it's a nice consistent green. <laughs> At this point, it's really soft and sticky. It's about like chewing gum. Oh, geez. So I just took a little small ball of that and shoved it in the hole in the top of the lantern, and it sticks neatly, except it kind of sunk down in there. Oh. So I let that harden up just a bit and stuffed another ball down in. Well, there, there you go. And then uh, we always keep uh, cooking oil around the shop there because it's handy for modeling, not cooking. And I'm putting a little daub of that on my finger, blending that and blending that and blending that back and forth until the top of the lantern smooths out and that seam disappears entirely. And I can feather the edges of that. Isn't that a neat product? That is a neat product. And this is why I love using it for filler instead of a lot of these other filler putties. Green stuff. Anyway, then I also used a little green stuff down at the bottom because on the Dietz Pioneer, there's quite a, quite a fillet where the gas return uh, tubes uh, come in just below the font there. And then I used, in this case, these sculpting tools that mm -hmm. we have in the, in the shop. We have dental tools and oh, sculpting yeah. tools. And they're great when you're working with green stuff. And there's the finished product. That is way neat. Look Ready for paint right there. Yes, look at it. One of the neat things is because the innermost tube is uh, big enough that the grain of rice bulb will slide right up through there, I can just add the light bulb after the fact. Well, that's neat. And that way I can replace it too, should yeah, it ever go bad. And it might. And it might. Now I've also laminated over the brass tube with some wood sticks, and then I'm gonna come back with a sanding drum 
on the Dremel and taper that down so that it looks like a wood pole that's actually stuck up into the socket at the bottom of the thing. But for now, it's just a big square piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> it just needs that final forming. But look at that. Yes. Oh, that is cool. It turned out great. I love it. It did. Now the other three lanterns here in the freight depot are Dietz hot blast lanterns. Oh. That other lantern from the picture that was sitting next to the Dietz Pioneer. So it's just a fraction of the size of a Dietz Pioneer. And so in this case, I'm going to have to make the glass chimney mm. on the toy lathe. Oh boy. So I'm gonna make that out of clear acrylic rod. And the goal is to make three like this. Two of these will be hanging on the outside of the depot. And then the third one, which is actually the one here in my fingers right now, mounts to the top of one of the shipping crates. So this actually has a, an extended font because it's going to go down through the top of the shipping crate for mounting. But I just wanted to hold it in place to see how it was going to look. So here's how these uh, chimneys were made. I started by taking my uh, clear ac acrylic rod, which is way too big for the project. And then I center drilled it. Oh, gee. And uh, so I just using one of my sharp tools, I found the middle of the rod while it was spinning, which isn't too hard to do, and then shoved a drill bit just by hand up through the middle of that. Oh, wow. And that uh, bored out the middle of that large enough to hold one of those grain of rice bulbs and then came in and carved down to the uh, size of the tube that this needs to slide over. So uh, it's a very thin section down there where the, the thing is going to slide over the brass tube. I kept uh, checking the size until the brass tube would neatly fit over the outside of the, the collar there. And then uh, double check with my grain of rice bulb to make sure the grain of rice bulb will fit up inside the the hole there. Well, that is awesome. So there it is. Wow. There's, that's the little collar. The key with all of this is go really slow because the acrylic rod wants to heat up and melt. And mm, I'll then, say it does. And that ruins the whole project. So you have to keep things cool. And then working with these, the, the little toy lathe came with these woodworking tools. Isn't that neat? These little chisels. And I'm using one of these little chisels that came with the lathe to shape the, the shape of the, of the chimney. Wow, just like pottery, but tiny. Just tiny. <laughs> and of course, it's all kind of gouged on the outside. So then I need to come back and clean that up. So the first thing I do is, is come in and start cleaning and, and perfecting the shape with files. Uh -huh. And that puts a much smoother surface on the, the glass chimney. Of course, it's got to look like glass when I get right. it done, not, not twisted melted plastic or something. But uh, with uh, just using these very fine uh, metal files, I was able to refine the shape and then come back with a fine sandpaper. The, these are those foam sanding blocks that we like so much. Right. And um, again, uh, being very careful to not let it heat up or it just ruins the whole part. But keep working it back and forth and back and forth with the rubber sanding block until most of the scratches from the files disappear. And then the final polishing of all things, I just use my fingers. That is just wild. <laughs> well, this way I can really feel how much heat is there. And because uh, if it gets too hot, it burns my fingers and I have to pull them away. But um, that really puts a, a high polish on the outside of that. That's just wild. If I really needed super, super, super clean, crystal clear, I'd probably come in with some uh, Meguiar's, you know, polishing compound or wow. something. But all things considered, this does a really great job of just polishing up the outside of the chimney and making it look good for for one of these Dietz hot blast lanterns. Check that out. That's neat. It's really, it's, wow. uh, and it's fun to watch yeah. the thing just come around, you know, as you pinch down on it and, and heat it generates. <laughs> And it just gets clearer and clearer as you go. Oh, look at that. And there it is, the finished product right Yee. there. Oh, wow. And so this is one of the taller ones. I did a couple of different proportions on these. One of these I'm going to use for a Dietz cold blast lantern later on. But these, these two 
R4 the Deets Hot Blast Lantern. And then I came back with my drill bit again uh, to make sure that there was plenty of room up through there with for the light bulb, but also to sort of polish the inside. Right. Because that can't be foggy either. And then cut it off. I'm using a, a back saw here, and I'm actually using it with the teeth facing the wrong way. Oh, that's a good idea. Because if the teeth are facing right way around, it gouges and cuts oh, and, and, and breaks could the melt. whole thing. Yeah. That's been my experience. So this is, by having the teeth facing the wrong way, it goes much slower, and then I can very gradually cut down through there and separate my chimney oh, from the, the rod. Isn't that cool? So there's the two for the hot blast lanterns and the one on the far right for a cold blast lantern. This will be turned into a cold blast lantern oh, neat. at some point in time. Wow. But isn't that cool? It is. And then of course there's plenty of room up inside there for the bulb. So this is of course the smallest brass tube and then more brass tubes will be telescoped over the outside of that soldered in place and then just like on the uh, the Dietz Pioneer I will turn this down on the lathe. But first I'm going to uh, solder the telescoping pieces together, mount the whole thing on my lathe and there it is. Oh look at that, that's so neat. Yeah it's not quite as smooth as if it was made on a real lathe but it, it serves the purpose. This is the one again that mounts through the top of the crate hence the extended bottom on there all of that area below the line will actually extend inside the wooden crate and serves just to mount it to the wooden crate. Okay, now to the gas return tubes. Here again, these are made out of just bent wire, mm -hmm. TNS brass wire, and then I soldered the little top tube uh, on there, uh, which has to be right in the center, which, which proved to not be that difficult to do. And then the little hood over the top of the chimney is just a plastic disc. I, I just took some thin plastic and a paper punch. There you go. <laughs> and then everything at this point has to be held together again with glue because otherwise it will melt the, uh, the plastic chimney if I start soldering at this point. So anyway, there's one of the lanterns that's going to hang on the wall. Here's the other one. And you can see that the font on these is a much shorter font because they don't have that, uh, that section that extends down through the top of the crate. So there's the two lanterns that will be inside. This is the, the crate lantern again. Uh, I have to take everything out to the railroad for testing because that's where the power is. Exactly. <laughs> and that's how that lantern mounts right there. So there it is mounted through the top of the crate and you can see that the whole bottom part of the font actually extends down through the top of the crate. That makes it stable. <laughs> yes. The crate will be in the very center of the freight house with a hole down through the floor so that it, it works like that. That looks really cool. So that's the interior lighting in there. Looks like it's smoking. I know. I hope not. <laughs> that's actually just the weathering on the back wall. It just makes the lantern look like it's smoking. If you're if you're Deet hot uh, you're Deet's hot blast. <laughs> is smoking like that you've got a major problem no and uh, you, you better trim your wick or something anyway these are the the two for the outside and uh, again they've got the shorter font and again i had to take everything out to the railroad for testing because that's where the power supply is now these will simply glue right to the outside wall and then the wires extend through the wall and I need to figure out some way to sort of hide that. Right. I think just a little daub of glue or something. Now while I was working on this, I thought, you know, I should do the permanent wiring on this part of the railroad. I've done that for the bottom part of the railroad, but up here everything's just been temporary. So I thought, let's, uh, let's take a break here and go ahead and, and install the permanent wiring to the logging railroad. It all has to be on connectors because it is modular, just so we can bring it down for maintenance. Right. Let's move on to the next section, which is the furniture for the interior. Oh, here we go. And this is your, your, your project yes, here. Yes, <laughs> I've been on a thing. So anyway, I use this really thin wood and just use an exacto knife to cut little pieces that I need. I kind of learned how to do this stuff by those other little kits I've been putting together. And I find that I can just build them from scratch with any kind of real thin wood. And then you're what, gluing everything together with super just, glue? Yeah, super glue. That It seems to really like the balsa wood. It sticks really well. And there's the roll top desk. Yes. 
So we've got one of these inside the passenger depot, mm -hmm. and, and now there's one inside the freight depot, too. Right. Now, this is your next little project. Uh, <laughs> mm, yes, we got this idea. <laughs> a little, uh, it isn't Christmas time, but this is sort of Christmas in July. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, you know, you can never be too prepared, but. Uh, That's looking a little bit like a major award. It's the major award, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a Christmas ornament, but I embellished it a bit with some fringe and painted well, it better. It did come in a wood crate in the movies, so yes. it seems like a logical thing. Thing to have in a freight depot. Right, we don't know how long it took to get there, but he had to go to the freight depot to pick it up. Yeah, yeah and there it is. There you go. Made in Regili, Italy. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks good on the loading dock out here. Right. And just kind of one of those fun, goofy little details. Right. That are sort of fun to include in your railroad. Absolutely. Occasionally somebody might spot that and go, excuse me, isn't that a major award? <laughs> But it turned out really neat, and uh, it's prominently displayed out there. Right. Okay, on to the railings now. This is phase one of the railings. The railing around the front side of the, the dock that's out on the actual dock, the, the part over the pond, uh, is going to be a rope railing. And the vertical poles for this are mounted this way. I've drilled into the loading dock and put a brass pin in place. And then center drilled the, uh, the poles themselves so that they uh, mount over those pins. Otherwise, they'd get knocked loose all the time. Now, this tall pole has a switch lantern on it. Oh, I love it. On it. I love it. And I'm afraid we will have to save that story for next week. Oh, shoot, but I love it. But isn't that neat? <laughs> So at this point, we have a bunch of crates that you've built and the, the desk. Right. And all of the lighting installed in here. And uh, doesn't it look great? It does. It looks very homey. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a few more crates in here. So we'll build a bunch more crates. But let's move on to the, the rope railing. Right. Oh, boy. Now, you said you had an idea for the rope. Well, my other hobbies have uh, some scraps left over. So I'm thinking yarn. Yarn. But uh, I think the yarn would be too small. Uh, you said you thought about twisting it. Yes, you can twist the yarn upon itself and just keep twisting and twisting. And when you let go, it spirals around on itself. And doesn't that look perfect? Yeah, it's, it's the same color as everything. Yeah, yeah. Just, that, that's my other craft hobby. That's the other craft <laughs> hobby. So the, the center span there is a single rope because I'm assuming that's a part of the rope that they would want to be able to take down mm -hmm. should they need to uh, bring a boat up to the dock or something like that. Um, anyway, there it is. Yes, it, it looks good. It looks good with the lights on and the mm -hmm. added crates inside and the rope railings in place, which will keep our banker here from falling off into the pond. We don't want that. All we need now is a cat. You mean to tear it all apart and throw it on the floor? <laughs> Not a big full-size cat, but a little tiny cat to be curled up asleep on one of the crates. Oh, oh, I see. That's yes. Insane. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to cut it off here for this oh, week. Oh, dear. So we'll pick it up from here next week. If you haven't been over to the channel, please pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber... <laughs> Boink, right there. There's the opportunity. <laughs> the blue button. <laughs> Click the blue button and that'll make you a subscriber. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with a collectible.